Chris Argrest and I, my background is I've owned a fiber processing mill for about nine years now and I do everything from make yarn to make felted sheets and products from the felted sheets and roving and cloud in from, from all types of fiber, whether it be wool, alpaca, goat, bunny, dog, cat, et cetera, et cetera. And, and together, we right. are Shepherd Industries. Yes. And I'm Teresa Perleyberg, and I'm the owner of Bear Creek Felting. I've been needle felting since 2006, and I've been teaching others how to needle felt through my needle felting kits and through the Bear Creek Needle Felting Academy. We had a successful Kickstarter that ended, oh gosh, five days ago, and we thank you all that, that supported us and gave and pledged to that. It, you, it, it has meant the world to us. And, and so much now we're yes. continuing on and we just had another wonderful meeting with the architects this morning and we finally have agreed on the base plan and and it looks wonderful okay we're a little wetter <laughs> we had to pause um, we had our tax equalization um, inspector come and while we were in the middle of it we discovered baby records, baby records, and they were so cute. <laughs> they are working at getting the school ready <clears throat> um, today for a dusty shoe tour for all the wonderful backers that we had that supported us during the Kickstarter. One year ago was the the day we went. I said, Chris, we got to go look at the yep. school. Yep. And we went and walked through the jungle. It was snowing mm -hmm. that day. It was. And when we walked up to it, we we parked, and we thought, is it? We were not sure if it was there. Right. You weren't sure if it was there. You oh. had seen it. Yeah. But after years of the overgrowth. Yeah. And there was leaves on the trees and mm -hmm. we couldn't see the school. And so mm -hmm. we kind of went through the jungle until we came upon it. And it was like whoosh. Yeah. There it was. <gasps> it was so neat. Mm -hmm. The beautiful brick. Yeah. Oh. And then we found an open door. If we didn't see any. No trust me single signs, so we toured it. Toured it. <laughs> yes. Then we yeah. walked up those staircases and we knew. We knew right there. Mm -hmm. Yesterday is was, I just feel like a big weight has been lifted off our shoulders because we secured our loan. We signed the papers for our very, very, very large loan for this. And, and we just praise God for the alumni. Uh, all the banks had told us no. And the last bank said, you, you need to get a co-signer. You need to get someone to back you if you have any chance of um, securing the funds for the whole project. So we were so fortunate that a alumni. Uh, yeah, one of the alumni yeah. uh, um, said he would back us. Back us. So, so we were yeah. able to secure our very, very large loan, which is... Yeah, so it's Ooh. been emotional up and oh, down yes. for the whole year. Mm -hmm. Things are happening at the school, so it's a little dangerous for Lots. us to be in there and noisy. They're it's hard to even get there. You have to wade through yeah. deep mud. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really muddy, and they're removing the roof, so when you go up on the top floor, you can see daylight. <laughs> it's kind of frightening, Yeah, because there's significant rainfall coming again up next week. So, <laughs> so we just had a blizzard. Our first blizzard of the season yeah. this last week, and mm -hmm. that delayed everything from the roof coming off. Yes. We, and we haven't been there a lot, but um, we're kind of in the way right now because there's so, so much going on. There's so different. There's there's shingling crews and yeah, and, and Roars is there, and the all the excavators were there bringing in the water and sewer. Yeah. So I got I come by every once in a while when I'm out and about and take pictures but um yeah other working in there and things we don't yeah just stay away we yeah. got we got hard hats today yes, we, yeah it's yeah. fun to hear everybody's comments mm -hmm. and what they you know i'm sure they if they haven't heard the whole story that's why we want to share it yeah absolutely so you know and the fact that confusion. so many people are surprised that we've made it this far you know she has a new roof on her and mm -hmm. you know and it's um and we're moving and, in. And we're moving <laughs> in in two months, so.
Happy New Year! 2020! Yay! Yay. Um, we wish from Teresa and I, we wish you the most blessed New Year in 2020. It's going to be a big year for us on this end. And um, there was no heat on here in here today. And it was 21 below this morning. She does a lot of editing and it takes her a long time and we're so super busy. I told her just let it go. Just leave it raw and let let's just get it out there. Anyway, so we'll see how this goes. Um, and nobody will watch anymore. Oh, just shut up. Okay. <laughs> I hope you're you're all tucked in with the virus thing going on. Yeah, and I know we're all you're all we're all in the same boat. I mean we're we're all frustrated. We're all ready for this to be ending and I'm predicting by next Wednesday it'll all be good. It'll all be <laughs> I'll be, I'll be ending. They're going to get this next Wednesday. <laughs> figured out and start doling that out. And, and, and she's and very be optimistic. Better. Maybe better. Yeah. I mean, they're canceling all the festivals, the fiber festivals. And it's just, it's, in my it's, outlook uh, is by next Wednesday, we're going to be on lockdown. <laughs> Stuck to we'll home. see who's so we're right. not even sure about next YouTube. We'll have split screen. <laughs> It'll all be good. We're, we're gonna have an open house to celebrate <laughs> that it's over. Yeah, next Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, some big, amazing ah. things happening. Yes. Oh. We, we have a beautiful brick going up in the gym on the inside, mm -hmm. on the walls. So nice. It looks beautiful. It's gonna Does. be gorgeous. This is gonna make me start laughing. <laughs> Pee my pants? Okay. Oh, see, another one. <laughs> and I'm leaving it in. <laughs> because you told me to. I told you I knew how to see it. I know. I messed it up. Anyway, Fusilier pasta's Fusilier. the theme of this year's <laughs> laughs. <laughs> I have crawled under the caution tape <laughs> and they have, where they removed the concrete, they have exposed this giant cistern <laughs> which holds 12,000 gallons of water and it's terrifying because there's, it's, yeah, and there it is. Last week I had this note that sat on my, this list that, that she referred to that sat on my lap and it was, it was done on a, uh, a piece and of cardboard, oh, cardboard I ripped off of a box and half of it was done with a sharpie that died halfway through and then the other half was done with a carpenter's pencil that I found on the floor. So now here is Teresa's list done on a, what is it, an iPad Pro? <laughs> and, da, da, and it is clink. It's clink. <laughs> I'm sitting here while Teresa is beautifying <laughs> here in my mess waiting for her to come back <laughs> meanwhile <laughs> I am over just touching up my makeup and <laughs> and <laughs> yes Teresa's husband so I'm touching up my makeup and I'm like, oh I need a light so I'm looking for the light and then as I'm looking for the light I see the fire alarm and so I pulled the fire alarm <laughs> And I thought she was in the bathroom. So here I am thinking, we have a fire, a real fire. So I'm freaking out because these were just installed today and they're super loud. I go racing down to the, to, to, to <laughs> at, as we were taught to find out where the fire is. And I'm looking, I'm like, West Pole. <laughs> I'm like trying to turn it off, but I can figure out how to turn it off. And <laughs> Yeah. Pretty soon Teresa comes bursting into the mechanical room laughing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she thinks it's very funny. <laughs> That'll be kind of funny. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Can I share our news? Nana is pregnant. <laughs> Do y'all remember Nana that Teresa worked months on and, and, and a lot of maybe you folks felt it along with her? Yeah. Well, she is pregnant.
we were on all of this stuff back here we were getting shocks anything metal mini electrocutions so the the rack that holds all of the internet stuff was shocking us the coolers back here were shocking us when we were trying to put the pop in there one day we kept getting shocks every time and they weren't just little baby shocks they were <sighs> like they would sticking your throat. finger in an outlet your whole oh. arm would hurt for quite a while afterwards mm -hmm. and we couldn't figure out what was going on mm -hmm. with that and when the electricians were here I'm, I can't believe we haven't shared this you'd think we would have I think we might have but anyway they um he said that it was the freezer after he finally got shocked putting the outside lights on Every time he would start one of the nuts, um, he would get, get a, a nasty shot. Oh, we were happy about that because nobody was believing. Nobody it. was believing us. Yeah. Of course, you weren't even believing me until you got no, shocked. I wasn't. Well, because this is how she puts it. I think I got shocked. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was shocked. I think. Well, I we're gonna go put our feet up. We're gonna go put our feet up. <laughs> Did you answer that question? No, because we were gonna start with our feet up. We're gonna end. Proof, we're gonna end with her putting feet up. her feet up. Join us For, on the couch. Be right before mm -hmm. she makes popcorn, because yes. we have how many minutes? <laughs> before we have 17 minutes. Okay, we're gonna rest. Yep. Thanks for watching. a dead mouse yeah there's one two Fish. three dead mice and a gopher here we are we've been wanting to get in the cistern <laughs> and we are in the cistern of right our school it looks awesome so next week there might be some big changes in this area. We I might have some footing support. It'd be wonderful. And hopefully you can hear us. Yes, I hope you can hear us. Okay, now we're gonna move into the interior of the boiler. I mean, I'm not getting in there without some light. I can't tell if she there. says, but as she gets in the boiler. I don't know what this would support me in here. There might be where the monster bunny lives. Well, now you ruined it. <laughs> I'm getting in there now. Okay, we'll save that for another time. We'll say that we lost light. Speaking to the camera. Oh, we lost light. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to the this time. So, see you next week, and thanks for joining us. God bless you all. Bye bye. So. New insulation, we had spray foam insulation put in, and then the fiberglass insulation on top of that, and then we put the use panels. And then the vapor barrier, so the plastic. The vapor yep. barrier, and then the panels, mm -hmm. and then all the lights and things. And mm -hmm. then, when was it? Several months ago, we yeah. noticed we were sitting down here, and it was dripping <laughs> onto the lights. Onto the lights. And then just splashing all over us. And yeah. so then we um, brought that up. And they looked under the panels, and it was all wet. All the insulation was wet, mm -hmm. and it's wet under all of the panels. Yeah, all over the gym. Yeah, they've since checked yeah, in several areas, everywhere. So then the next plan was to 
bring what did we have five or six dehumidifiers yep. in to, to dry it out try and suck all the moisture out of the insulation and that didn't suck any moisture out of the insulation and oh. so then we're moving on to the next plan was to cut a strip down the middle and pull the insulation out and then blow insulation back in and seal it up properly and we didn't really like that one yeah because the the panels the wood now is starting to have a little wave effect mm -hmm. from from being so so yeah. wet oh gosh it's so beautiful it's the most gorgeous day oh and one thing we got to point out here i don't know if i think i swallowed a bug <laughs> I'm not editing. Okay, great. <laughs> anyway, hello, welcome hello. to the back of the school. Back of the school. Yes, and what you're looking at here are the concrete forms. Those are walls. Those mm -hmm. are the walls for the mill. Is that amazing? Not so exciting and amazing. That Look at how big they are. <laughs> I know. Isn't it so cool? Welcome to YouTube number 59. Behold. Our new sidewalk. <laughs> so this is the cement slab that we poured after our last YouTube. This garage door is new, but what used to be here was the death trap. Oh yes, the death trap. <laughs> Complete. <laughs> we are in the stairwell. Um, in the that we just poured today. Mm -hmm. It's. We look like we just poured it too. Mm -hmm. Yep. We hard had it for well, the for for the because for we safety. had to climb a ladder for safety, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to be safe. Mm -hmm. We had a big meeting today, Teresa. What do you have before you? I have the, the timeline, all the laid time out line. of exactly when everything's happening, yes, and when it's going to be done. Printer here behind here, saddle stitched, saddle stitched, <laughs> book form. And we're pretty proud. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and I just finished these last night so that we could print them out on our new printer today. Yes. We, we even physically felt like we had to wear our hard hats. There was so much going on. Mm -hmm. But there again, and we're all again, about <laughs> safety. So we always wear our hard hats. Yes. And then we had a little, a little bad news, kind of. <sighs> we were all set to get Nana, our... Um, to the vet. Our pregnant elephant for an ultrasound that we were going to share but COVID just wasn't safe yeah couldn't risk it no. so so next week hopefully we have we'll try again if not the week an after. ultrasound picture for you of her little baby mm -hmm. growing inside of her so which should be I think it's due in April right We'll have to check back. I don't know. We have that. We can't right remember when we said what. <laughs> I'm so delighted <laughs> to let you know that Nana is here with us and she has had her ultrasound. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. The baby's adorable. The baby is absolutely adorable. Now, I'm extremely developed at this stage. <laughs> so, Steve and Daryl put in all the brick and we. Grouted it. Grouted it up. Right? Oh man, it was we were so done, much grouting. We were so excellent. much. Yes. We're very proud of our work at the end. If you look at our first section, <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's bad. The learning section. The top floor of the addition, the walls are half up. Mm -hmm. The floor of that top level are up. My husband was like, what were you thinking? The windows in the guest rooms are very large. They're very glorious. nice. They're beautiful. There's two but we huge wanted, windows in there. It's yeah. going to be so lovely because yeah. what we loved about the school is the big windows on the front. And so mm -hmm. we put them in the back as well. We first started this project. I think most of you viewers that have watched before, uh, I kind of wanted to commit both of them. You know, because when I walked through it and I, you know, they saw the potential, I saw all the work. Um, it's still a work in progress. There's still a lot of work to be done, but at least now I think I can see their vision a little better now than I could 
when we first got this place? Oh, it's, it's huge. I would have probably came in and seconded that motion for Steve the, the first time I was here, you know, and that was, uh, I look back at it, that was actually August 15, 2019. It was my first day walking on the site, onto this area here. And yeah, it was unbelievable what I saw. But um, yeah, yeah it's the same thing. Uh, being here long enough, seeing the vision, yeah, yeah, it, it keeps me going. Yeah, and like I said before, there's a lot of talented people working on that. But you know, I think one thing you know, we we talk about. My wife often talks. How do you know? How do you know how to do that? Well, it took. Get some groundwork done and get some sidewalks in. Uh, hopefully. Uh, the windows come for the school here pretty soon. That way we can start getting the inserts and all of that redone on the schoolhouse itself, getting that uh, looking a lot better than she does. She's a, she's a cool old fragile building, but I think she'll stand another hundred. Saying why did Do I you that see on? what's going on with my hair now? <laughs> the last one we did about a month ago, there was a guy on there, his name was Daryl. He talked about this school and <clears throat> what it was like when it first started. And he was right, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to remember what it was. And uh, <clears throat> once people can come here and look at pictures of where it used to be and things like that, hopefully people will understand that uh, this this thing is pretty pretty amazing. Ed Lauchi, who's been working on our flooring, mm -hmm. he's been putting all the wood flooring, the original wood flooring, back down in the museum room and the retail store mm -hmm. and in the landing area. Just today, he started mm -hmm. the landing area. Um, so he's been working hard at that, and we're pretty excited about how all that looks. He's gonna he still has some finishing work on it and cleaning up. And you'll see probably while I'm talking, there's a there's this video playing about me putting all the new windows in. Believe me, I do not work as fast as that video shows it to go. But you can see that it goes it goes along pretty good. Anyway, on to our product feature, and we are surrounded by chicken. Chicken. Do you hear the chicken? He's Chris so said it would be nice to have yes. that in the background, but it's getting kind of annoying. <laughs> I, you know, if any, I could chuck something at it. No, she, she's okay. She's, she's just going to settle down. Okay, our product, we're surrounded by the product feature, and it is the wool, the wool of Bear Creek, and that is what makes the needle felting kit so extra special, and all the wool that you purchase um, on the Bear Creek website, um, we are yeah, looking so, at them right yeah. there. <laughs> Look at that one right there. Yeah, She's standing so there cute. with her head cut of cock, like, what? Who okay. are you talking to? We're going to have to pause this video so I can kill a chicken. No, she's not killing a chicken, Arthur. So. So. Cock. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Chris calls. How did you that I think because you, I think you kind of mispronounced something in that last part. I don't remember what it was. Anyway. <laughs> So she she doesn't like to call it cock. She calls it cult. I, I call it caulking. Caulking. Because because she's scared to say caulking. <laughs> it just doesn't sound good. And so I, I told her that it's not cult. It's cult. That would be like it's saying I talked to you. <laughs> or I walked over there. <laughs> and she but it's, said, no, 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 because it's C A U L K. It's cock. True. It's not cock. It is cock. No, it's just. Seriously, so people you, help if you, me. If you look, yeah. It's, it's cocking. You. Cocking. It's not cocking. <laughs> Well, it Cult should be coking. Below this video, you comment. <laughs> Cult? <laughs> it's coking. Poor Nana is, um, she's on bed rest now. Mm -hmm. um, it turns out in the latest 
uh, ultrasound. ultrasound. The, the baby isn't fully developed. So Nana has to be on bed rest and because we do not want her to give birth before the baby is ready. So it's going to be, we don't know. Her due date is Thursday. Th is Thursday, yeah. Which will so have we're, passed when this is on. Um, yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> we may or may not have a little baby bundle of joy there for mm -hmm. dear Nana, which we are so excited. It's Nana's first. And um, and it's very common in elephants that they'll they will go longer. I mean, it's really hard for them to gauge their their proper due dates. Ultrasounds are hard on elephants. Right. Crying because of baby so Nana. Yeah, baby Nana. Yep. Yeah. So we will keep you updated on Nana's oh. progress, and hopefully next by, by next, next YouTube. We have a baby. They will be and here, and that, she, and then that she's feeling well enough that she can can attend the YouTube and, and introduce her. We have heard baby. that there is a local rumor going around that we, these crazy ladies at the Gnome Schoolhouse, <sighs> yes. are getting a baby elephant. <laughs> and it's true. And it's true. Can't deny it. Can't so. deny that. So, and yeah, uh, and last last week we also discussed this caulking. Or, <laughs> I don't know why I'm bringing this up this time, but, yeah. Um, yeah. So. And so, what did Teresa do the first thing? She's going through there. Yep, I won. <laughs> it's, it's true. I did win. Yes, she did. I won the cockfight. <laughs> Late last night, mm -hmm. she had her baby. And just a big, chunky, healthy baby. Baby, yes. little boy, really big. Yeah, actually, can, can, can we can we bring yes. her, bring him on? Yes, she's and very his name proud. Is, his his name is Imvula. Come and again, Imvula. Got that, everyone? <laughs> it is Zulu for rain because he was born in the rain. And so, if you've oh, it's okay, um, okay. <laughs> been paying attention, uh, I listen to books when I when I needle felt and I've been listening to, I listened when I made Nana, <laughs> here he is. Here he is. Uh, when oh. I made Nana, I listened to the book, The Elephant Whisperer, and that's how I got her name. And so I was listening to it again, and the baby that she had in the book <laughs> was named Mvula. And he was born in the rain, it and was it, so was it was raining yesterday. So it was raining last night. It was just night. a horrible and so, day. And, right, and here we are. This is the south wall of the gym and this is wool 100% wool <laughs> roving that is being woven onto this wall and and Kat and Libby are rocking it we absolutely love it we've been waiting to set up the store for a very long time two years and we get a call that one of the llamas had escaped and we have spent over an hour trying to get this llama to go back home without success. So now we are moved on to plan B. We got the other llama. Chris is leading him across the field <laughs> and trying to lure this one to follow the other llama. So we'll see how this works. I can't remember if his name is Fred or Barney. Lost track. You're not calling him stupid head. You won't let us catch him. He just walks like that. <laughs> right through somebody's field. There's his home. He needs to go there. I don't see Chris yet. She's oh there I do. She's way over there, leading the other llama. Trying to coax this llama over there. It might be working. He was running that way. about it. We have so much to do today and this wasn't one of them. Right. The prize That's why winner, we're not bopping around to all the spots. No, because we're not, tired. There's no time. There's, <laughs> the prize <laughs> next winner week. From, oh, you're here. <laughs> next week. <laughs> we're having guests in our rooms. <gasps> <laughs> they're not ready. Well, they kind of are. They don't have doors. <laughs> 
But they will by next oh week. Oh my gosh, it is. Oh wow. Welcome, Welcome. to YouTube 100. Hey, fireworks. <laughs> kapoo, kapoo. Oh, this is really a really special um, a special moment. Because when we started the YouTubes, we did not count ahead and say, okay, well, of course, we didn't even know our, when our grand opening was and how it just all worked out that right after our grand opening is our 100th episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. The whole state <laughs> is so dry and crunchy, but this has been heavily watered. This is our side. And we have the water bill to prove it. Last week sometime. Chris started getting the sniffles, <laughs> and by Friday evening, she couldn't taste anything. Yeah. So, so here we are. COVID. <laughs> she, she's actually on the mend. I think you should go to Washington, D.C. and show Washington that women can accomplish. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, awesome. I really awesome. think so. <laughs> and you're doing this unedited. Remember? You say that and then you say ridiculous things. I'm not going to say ridiculous things. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Happy Year. Bye-bye. Because I could hear it gush, you know, just pouring down on the wood floors and all the, you know, as we walked up these floors. Oh, oh, meanwhile, we're running we around were trying to find a fire. Absolutely ill. It turns yeah. out Libby was in her apartment. She was on her computer sitting at the desk. Yeah. And, you know, she hears the fire alarm, so she's going to go check if there's a fire somewhere. So she came running out. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, while she's gone, water is pouring onto her computer. Open computer. Right onto it. It's just pouring and so then I was trying to figure out so who do you call next to get this to stop I don't even know if I got all of the things turned right yeah. so then I called the number on the fire suppression thing mm -hmm. and they said our emergency yeah that's what it said and then they said we'll send out the service well uh, we'll let no what is it notify the service mm -hmm. <laughs> got our appraisal back today and the values look awesome. And so now our conventional financing can move on through and move ahead into mm -hmm. underwriting. And so we're very pleased. Featured us in our, where the school is actually the cover. Mm -hmm. And they did a wonderful article. Yes, they um, did. They, they, even, they even contacted Ron out in Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And got his quote. Haven't You'll you have read, read it? it? You know, and he, and he lays it out that, that he did not give us the money, that he loaned us a yes. high interest loan with to encourage us to quickly um, convert it into conventional he, he does say we laid everything on the line. He does. He, he was truthful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then? Then you say, ah! misbehaving. You were misbehaving, yes. And she grabbed me by the shoulders and yep. brought me out here. Yep. And I think she told me to face that statue. <laughs> yes. So I took my little scribe out and thought I might as well leave a calling card. You know? Yep, yep, exactly, yep. Uh, and you will forever be on our little statue right there. Oh, yeah. Rick, yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure why you would do that. Um, explain this to me. Explain your businesses to me a little bit more. Um, it's, it's, it's not normal. They're not, they're not normal. This, this is crafty. My husband was out to check the sheep, and there was a couple, there was a dead ewe and a dead lamb. And we weren't sure why, you know, what was going on. And 
So we decided that on Sunday we were going to get out there and worm them. Sometimes they can get infested with worms. Um, so we thought, well, we'll take that precaution. And then when we came out on Sunday, there was five dead sheep. It just, it just, it just makes no sense because why would a healthy you and her two lambs die all mm -hmm. together? I mean, it just, that's not characteristic characteristic of worms it's just yeah. not so yeah the pictures originally. oh there was yeah the, oh, okay. when the, the guys came out here for their first assessment mm -hmm. you know and all that there was a few pictures taken you know and I was mm -hmm. wow you know yeah wow <laughs> and then just more wow we replaced the entire roof um, you know but first we actually build walls from all the way from the basement all the way through both stairwells, all the way up and supporting the, the actual roof line. Yeah, I think that was the first thing you did, wasn't it? That was the first thing yeah, we did. That was and then, scary. You know, that, was, <laughs> that was a feed in its own. Yeah. And then, um, then we went to removing the roof after that, you know, and then we um, <clears throat> got the roof replaced. And then at the same time, too, we were working on the gym roof. Yes. Replacing, you know, fixing that all up, getting that stripped off and replacing that mm -hmm. all about the same time stuff. Of every, every, both the roofs were happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, the gym looks fine, but the rest probably needs a bulldozer or the shovel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But. Interesting. You know, just like everybody, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. You know, when you're doing it long enough, you, you, you come onto a place that looked kind of like it did mm -hmm. back then, you know, where the, the floors are heaving, the floor back over here is falling down, mm -hmm. the, the, there's whole giant holes in the, in the roof over here, there's, you know, it's kind of, it, it, was, it was really overwhelming at the point, kind of probably realizing, taking some of the old stuff and making it relive. Ah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that you guys kind of, uh, I wouldn't say forced on me, <laughs> but kind of just like, you believed in this would work, mm -hmm. so it kind of made me believe it would work. Mm -hmm. And once I could see it, I knew it was going to work. Their worms were resistant to the dewormer. And so then we have been, the vet and us, have been uh, researching and trying to figure out what we can possibly do when the worms are resistant to the dewormer. We would come out and find five dead. Uh, we've had at least one a day for I don't know how many days. Um, and so last week I shared about our plan and that we had varying ideas from vets <laughs> on what we should do and it was a triple dewormer. And then, so we decided we should do that triple dewormer when, when Jeff and I were, do, were doing the research and figuring out what we should do. And that is the best thing to do when you're dealing with resistant worms, especially barber pole worms. And we had trouble finding the prohibit, which was the third dewormer that we needed. And then we, wormed, we weaned the babies and we put them in the barn and <coughs> we went three days, I think, and then um, I was busy with the retreat this last weekend and my husband was texting and saying, well, we need to do something with the lambs tomorrow. And I was like, why? No. <laughs> and he's like, well, <coughs> I went out to the barn and there was seven of them dead. When he was doing the, when he posted them, he he didn't see any worms. He didn't see a problem with worms at all. Um, he did say that there is a bacterial infection going on, 
And so he's told Jeff that he should run them all through and give them antibiotics. And so he did that. But what we did find when from the lab um, at NDSU was that they died from salmonella. <laughs> so we, we feel like we've been going on with this sheep stuff forever and we don't want to depress anybody. But the sheep are fine. The sheep are doing good. And then no my, more deaths anyway. <clears throat> and then my husband decided to fall. And I found, I went, walked into our house and there was a pile of blood here, a pile of blood there. And I found my poor husband in our bed. I don't know how he made it in our bed. And he, he, he was like his eyes were huge. It was like he had put golf balls under his eyes and they were just like blood red and blue and he couldn't open his eyes and he wouldn't respond to me. So I called the ambulance, took him to Fargo into the ER and he was there in ICU for three days and he had a fall. He had three skull fractures and brain bleed and all sorts of horribleness. And yeah, and then we, then he checked himself out because he was through being there. And um, so then I took care of him for a few days. And now today was Tuesday and it was the first day he was feeling better. So of course then he um, was driving the payloader and he was driving the tractor. He was scaring all of us. He was scaring all of us. <laughs> do you believe that saving places can lead to change in your community? I do. Join me, Bob Vila, as I host the National Preservation Awards at Past Forward Online on Friday, November 4th. Together, we'll celebrate extraordinary preservation projects and the people who made them happen. It is my great pleasure to inform you that the National Trust for Historic Preservation has selected the Nome Schoolhouse to receive one of three Richard H. Driehaus Foundation National Preservation Awards in 2022. On behalf of all of us at the National Trust for Historic Preservation, congratulations. The coveted Driehaus Awards are bestowed on distinguished individuals, nonprofit organizations, public agencies, and corporations whose skill and determination has strengthened communities through the preservation of their architectural and cultural heritage. This award celebrates the best of the best in stewarding and adaptive reusing historic buildings in ways that honor their legacies and help to build a better future. Thank you for making such an important contribution to the preservation of our shared cultural heritage. And again, congratulations on the impressive success of your project. It takes a certain amount of imagination to pull off an adaptive reuse project. Not everyone can see the potential in a derelict building, mentally removing the wear and tear and filling the empty spaces with people. The visionaries behind the three winners of the 2022 Richard H. Driehaus Foundation National Preservation Awards, a North Dakota schoolhouse transformed into a fiber arts center, a famous Chicago hospital that's now a mixed use hotel and office complex and an architecturally significant Los Angeles funeral home turned affordable housing community possessed the ability to do just that. Preserving their agriculture and cultural heritage. Agriculture? <laughs> <laughs> Not 
agriculture. Did I say agriculture? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Woo. Agriculture. Our, you know, we do that, <laughs> but <laughs> architectural. <laughs> architectural. Okay, when you're threading your yarn, instead of trying, I'm giving you a look. A lesson. She's here. giving a lesson. Instead of doing it from the end here, like you do oh, usually, do it from the side. I like to lick my finger first. It's and I weird, do this. but she does it. <laughs> and then you just kind of roll it into, because the eye of the needle is a little bigger. So you just kind of roll it into the eye of the needle. And then you just pull it out. Just like this. Shush. Just look at her go. Anywho, that's, it's as simple as that. So then you have... It is? Was it simple? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. I didn't want to tell you I could. <laughs> no. It wasn't as simple as she projected. in fun of me. So what do they do to call their their use onto them. It, no, or they don't do that. I, I have not witnessed this, so I'm curious. How do they call the use? <laughs> they do make a weird noise, but it's not that noise. Well, what is it? They make a funny face. They do a funny face. And I'm not gonna do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's weird. Okay. The rams so they, are weird. Okay, so how's this The rams work? are stupid. So, God bless you all, and we're gonna go have a little project now. Excuse me, honey. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, folks. So. If you're sensitive to chewing, turn it off now. Turn the sound off. <laughs> so we're gonna make roses. Mm-hmm. I have and my way. I, I need a scissor. Way. I could. We're hungry, so sorry. Mm -hmm. So as most of you know, we had a problem last fall with salmonella bacteria in our flock. And we lost a bunch of sheep and we've been dealing all winter with our local vet trying to find a vaccine, do something to stem this back a little bit. Yesterday he called back after spending about a week on the phone with veterinarians around the country and pharmaceutical companies and other vets that he knows and right now we're kind of in the uncharted waters with an experimental vaccine that we're gonna hopefully be able to give this weekend to we're gonna start with four sheep four ewes and four lambs and kind of go from there see what happens a um, little update on the schoolhouse here. Um, the girls yesterday signed the papers for the con uh, conventional loan now. And we want to sh give a shout out to Roxy at Dakota Business Lending and Darren and Derek at Bank North, which they're local people here in town right out, right outside of our, in Enderlin. The uh, needle felting course this year that was online and I just pulled the trigger and decided to do it and it has been like the best decision I've made. The second thing I really loved was the camaraderie. I loved how the group of people coming from all over, we came from Colorado, California, Michigan, North Dakota, Minnesota, and we were able to become a cohesive group very quickly and had a ton of fun together. We laughed and laughed and shared stories, and it does feel like we've known each other forever despite only meeting a few days ago. And I am already planning to come back next year. This last weekend was my son's wedding here at the Gnome Schoolhouse, which is something that we had, both Chris and I, uh, he's been dating Tori for six years uh, before we started this. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were 
we right thought away, they we're would hopeful be the, to be like the first, first. wedding. <laughs> but they were a little young, and so yeah. it finally took place this Sunday, and uh, it was amazing. The perfect weather. They it got was perfect. married in front of the school. Mm -hmm. Had an absolutely wonderful weekend. The food was phenomenal, over the top. I don't think I've ever cleared my plate, but I did every meal this weekend. And the setting is beautiful. Waking up and seeing the sunrise and the space we had to work in was perfect. Plenty of space, plenty of rooms, the tables, the chairs, everything. It was top notch. I'm Jean Hainlin from Maple Grove, Minnesota. And I came to the creativity camp, uh, first one that's ever been held at Gnome Schoolhouse. I was very excited to have a dedicated time to do my own creative work. And the wonderful part was meeting all the other creators, people who knew so much about each area of, of the arts that they were working on. And they shared their ideas and their tips and their tools and expertise and I was awed by all the knowledge and all the generosity of ideas. I got a lot done. That was a real bonus uh, to be able to set up a space and leave it and come back to it, take breaks, have conversations, and produce when I was ready to at any time over the course of several days. We had the best food, the nicest surroundings and care by our hosts, and I just loved it. My name is Meredith Erickson Stoman, and I'm from Tower City, North Dakota, about 20 miles away from here. It's my first retreat at the Gnome Schoolhouse. It was an awesome weekend to just sit and relax and finish up projects, start new projects. We also got to partake in mini sessions. I took all that I could, broom making and print making, slow sewing, and then I also taught one on the Vici Nike Polish paper cutting that I do. It's a great atmosphere, very safe and comfortable, awesome food, wonderful time, and I'll be back in June if I can <laughs> make it work. Hi, I'm Carrie Finn from West Fargo. North Dakota and my friend Sarah called and said hey do you want to go to a creativity retreat in Nome and I was here for the grand opening and I love the school and all the fun things that are going on here and I thought yeah let's try it so um, I called a friend from St. Paul she came with me and it's just so fun to be with like-minded people uh, people who get what you do sewers knitters felters all kinds of different people so it was a great experience and I'd highly recommend it Hi, I'm Izzy. Um, I'm from Fargo. I'm a student at NDSU and I really liked Creativity Camp because it gave me a chance to get away from school and work on things that weren't for school and just do things for my own self and for my own creativity. Hi, I'm Sarah Armstrong. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. This is my first time to Nome, North Dakota. People laughed at me when I told them where I was going, but it's an amazing place, a great facility. The staff was wonderful. The teachers were great. Learned a lot. Actually got a couple of quilt blocks done. Hmm, that was an accomplishment. And it was just a wonderful experience. And now I have the class schedule for the rest of the year. So I'll be back. Hello, I'm Gail Whitaker from Jamestown, North Dakota. I just finished a weekend retreat. That was the cre creative camp. And um, just want to say that it was a very enjoyable, relaxing retreat. I've taken many of these retreats where we've had a class the entire weekend and they're very fun and you learn a lot, but this was so different. 
because it was very easygoing, relaxing. You got to work on what you knew you were working on, and it was just a great time. My name is Sarah, and I'm from Fargo, and my favorite part of Creativity Camp, if I had to name just one, is that everything was taken care of, and so all we had to do was work on what we wanted to work on and learn from each other and teach each other and just do all the things we wanted to do with time set aside to just do those things. So it was an awesome experience and I highly recommend. We are the makers, dreamers, and thinkers who love to learn and we learn by doing. We're curious, creative, resourceful. We believe in possibilities and we see opportunity and challenges. We find joy in the process, for we know it is much more than just a means to an end. It's exploration, discovery, collaboration. We send a piece of ourselves out into the world with each thing we create. Together, we make the world a better place in ways both big and small we make.